Hello, and welcome to this in-source solutions production of installing and configuring the Historian Remote IDAS. In this vid video, we're going to focus on the three basic components. The Wonderware Historian, an I.O. server where the remote IDAS is going to be installed, and a simulated PLC. Now let's begin. First we'll focus on our I.O. server. Here I have a basic I.O. server and it's running on Windows 7. It's running a Windows 7 operating system with Service Pack 1. Uh, you'll notice that I also have on my I.O. server two Wonderware based I.O. servers in the, in the form of uh, a DA server and FS Gateway. Uh, they're both configured and they are running. And uh, so this will simulate or focus on the third component which is my uh, PLC where the data is coming from. So let's start the installation process. Now I've placed my CD-ROM into the drive and I'm going to run setup. Now the program should be run as administrator. I'll get this informational message and I'll just simply click on yes to install the prerequisite um, Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5.1. Now while this is installing it's always a good idea to verify that you can, from the I/O server, you could ping the uh, the first component in the uh, the architecture, which is the historian. So I'm going to bring up a command prompt, and I'm just going to simply execute the ping command to see if I can see my um, my historian. Okay, so I could ping it by the uh, NetBIOS name, so we should be good to go. And also, it's always it's also a good idea to see if you could ping it from the historian as well. And let's switch over to the historian and, and check that. Okay, I've switched over to my historian and let's ping the I.O. server. And I've verified that I could see the I.O. server as well. So we shouldn't have any communications issues um, uh, during the configuration uh, step in the process. Now let's install some prere uh, prerequisites. Once the prereqs have been installed, let's move on. Let's shut down any Wonderware MMCs. Go on next. Now let's move on to the product base selection as far as the installation. And here it's important to select the correct component. And since the IDAS, or the remote IDAS in this case, is a part of the historian, we'll select it. And here we're going to select custom install, uh, customize installation because we don't want the entire historian package. So here we'll just simply unselect historian and select IDAS. And click on next. Install any additional prereqs. Once that's been met, let's go to the next screens and now let's install the IDAS component. Now you may get this informational message uh, that talks about uh, some D the DA servers that are running. You may want to uh, close them. Uh, you can safely go on to next. All 
right installation complete click finish and now let's restart the server all right our servers back online now let's verify that our DA servers are functionally are functioning and now let's move on to the historian on the historian let's open up the system management console and here you see my historian and the uh, configuration editor and the management console we verify that the historian is functioning as we expect now let's create a new IDAS and for the IDAS node let's give it the name of our IO server or where the remote IDAS is installed let's create a store forward directory and let's set a, a minimum megabyte threshold we can go with the defaults and now we've created our new IDAS let's commit pending changes now let's create a new IO server where's the IO server located it just happens to be where our IDAS is located let's define the IO server type in this case we're going to be talking to an FS gateway OPC server okay and let's commit pending changes all right the previous changes are still in effect or still being uh, committed but in the meantime let's create a new topic now to verify the topic let's head back to the IO server now on the uh, IO server we have our Matricon OPC as far as our uh, uh, FS gateway OP server that we're talking to and this is our device group OPC underscore Matricon so this is what we're going to put uh, for our topic as far as our historian IDAS is concerned so coming back to our historian let's put in the correct topic OPC underscore matricon that is what I have uh, pre-configured in my case I want to enable late data I click on finish and now let's create a new analog tag I'm gonna call it line 01 amperages click on next I'm gonna configure it set my engineering units I'm going to select uh, what I expect here as far as amps. Click on next. Now this is very important. We have to determine exactly the item, the exact item that we want to put here. So let's head back to our IO server and make sure we got it right. Back at our IO server, let's look at the device items here. Let's go down the list and this is what I want. Let's take a look at it here. So this is what I'm going to put there. Production lines dot ln uh, ln zero one underscore amperages. Now back at our historian, I'm going to put exactly what I had there. I 
me verify that again. All right, I think we're good to go. Okay, we're back at our historian here, and I believe we're good. Click on next. I'm going with the default. Click finish, and let's commit pending changes. Let's verify that we're acquiring data. And we can see here that I am getting data. Uh, I, have, I have my new IDAS pointing to my uh, remote IDAS location. It says I am receiving. And let's see what we're getting. This is my new tag. I'll add it to the chart. And as you can see, I'm getting data. Need to learn more about this and other InSource products? Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for InSource products. Whether you're using Classic InTouch, Historian, or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. Thanks for watching.